And so a cultural attack launched upon the people's lives. And we see this coming about in many parts of the world. Our younger generation is growing up under this cultural attack. The whole society itself, at the same time, is in a serious change. And many of the thinkers within Western society are now confused. Confused about which direction to go in. Because elements have, are now coming forward and coming up in society to such an extent, these elements are, 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 are breaking down all the values of the system. One of the most dangerous groups coming up to the surface is the homolut, is the homosexuals. For years, they stayed in the closet. They stayed underground. It was known in Greece. It was known in Rome. It was known in high circles of the aristocrats. It was known in, in, in countries where there was corruption. But now, it comes to the surface. And it reaches the point where in some of the most powerful cities, some of the cities that are considered to be the best places in the world, the Como loot is taking over the society. And when they take over, know that the destruction is near. In Toronto, Canada, where the United Nations and many of the, the, the scholars of the world had projected that Toronto is probably the most cosmopolitan city in the world at this point in time. And it is one of the best places in the world, they say, to go if you want to have a good time in the dunya. But the coma loot has come to the surface. Last year, when I returned to Toronto, the Muslims were reeling. The Muslims were in a state of confusion because the coma loot were marching in the streets. 750,000 homosexuals marching in the streets. And they said, we're queer and we're here and we're not going away. And so they stood up boldly against the Muslims. And I remember being down in New York and also seeing this. And I remember this parade that they had. We were upstairs in, in Manhattan and, and a big noise came about. And I, I woke up and I said to the brother, what is going on? Is, is it workers who are demonstrating? Is it the poor people who are marching in the streets? And they said, no, this is Gay Pride Day. I went downstairs, I had my kufi on and I had a long shirt. And I went on the corner and this person came up to us and he said, you're strange. I looked at the brother next to me, and then I looked at him. His hair was like a chicken, you know, a rooster. <laughs> like in the middle, he had a chain uh, neck shirt on. Uh, he had this, these metal chains around his neck, short pants and big boots. And then he said to me, you're strange. And I turned to the brother and I said, Sadaqa Rasulullah, Bada al Islam Gariba, wa Sayyaudu Gariba, and Kama Bada, Fatuba al Ghuraba. Islam started strange and it will return to being strange. So give glad tidings. Give tidings of a tree in Jannah for those who are strange. And so we looked and we said, This is the end of time. But no, it was a day of pride. And what was the worst thing about the situation in Toronto? That the brothers and sisters now realized it had come to the surface and I thought that we had put an end to this. It, this thing started about 10 years ago. But now it reached a high level. When they first came to us 10 years ago, and I pray that this doesn't strike you, but if it hasn't already, it may be on the way. They called me up at the time when I was imam in one of the masjids and they called me and they said, uh, Mr. Hakim, there's a new organization. This one is called Min Alaq. You know, they always talk about these blood clot things in Min Alaq. We said, what is this organization? 
They said it is gay, lesbian, bisexual, Islamic support group. <laughs> they want a new tafsir of Surat al Hud. They want the story of Lut alayhi salam told in another way. So it's politically correct. And they said, what is the Islamic position? And I told them, put my name in the paper. The punishment is death. And I'm not going to change this religion. But then they said, what would happen to you if a homosexual came to the masjid? This is a serious question. Man. And I reflected on that. Because shortly before that, a brother did come to me. And he said to me, I'm a homosexual, and he cried. And I said, what happened to you, brother? And he said, my father abused me. This is a Muslim. Now, we're going to talk straight talk here tonight. My father abused me. And so I felt sorry for this brother in my heart. I said, make a dua for him. But I said, do you know, do you realize that you're sick? And he said, I'm sick. And so he said, In Allah Yaqfidanuba Jamian, Allah forgives all sins. There is nothing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could not forgive if the person comes in sincere tawbah. And so we accepted this brother in the community on the condition that he would see a psychiatrist. And he would seek professional help. And also the advice from the Quran and the Sunnah to try to deal with this crisis that he was in.